Yeah, hello and welcome. This is Matthias for MamoWorld.com and in this After Effects tutorial series I want to give you some tips how to do better tracking, rotoscoping and uh, like in this case here content replacement in After Effects with the help of Mocha and some other tools. And I assume that you already know the basics of doing such a corner pin track as you can see here. So here you can see this is the original footage that we have and here is the final result. So we want to replace the content uh, of this sign here. And you usually do this with a corner pin and I don't want to cover all those basics but just address some very specific issues that often occur and I want to show you how to solve them. So the first one that we're going to address in the first part is what do you do if during the track the object that you are tracking is disappearing completely. So you can see here this car is running in front of the sign and how to do deal with this situation. In the second part we try to rotoscope this car in the foreground which is, which is in particular difficult uh, since it has a lot of motion blur. So when you do the new insert you have to ensure that in the motion blur not part of the old sign shows up. This is what we're going to address in the second part and in the third part I show you a really really quick and nice way to rotoscope uh, the hands here. So to put the hands in front of the sign with really almost no work. Yeah that's it and now let's get started with the first part. So here I'm in After Effects and here I have my footage that is by the way kindly provided by Artbeats. So thanks a lot to Artbeats and Artbeats Express for providing this clip to us. We taking it here and drag it into a new composition. And then I draw a mask around the region that I want to track. And it really doesn't have to be an accurate one. And then with the help of uh, Mocha Import Plus so this is an extension developed by myself which simplifies workflows with Mocha. You can directly send now this clip, including the mask, to Mocha. And I want to override my existing project uh, because I want to show you everything from start. So you can see that now the track inc or the clip including the mask is already here in Mocha. And all I need to do is set my tracking option. I want to track this with the help of perspective and click on track forwards. And now we track until the point where the car enters the scene. So I click stop and now I track frame by frame to see maybe uh, since this here is a pretty good texture to track the car won't irritate too much unless it covers too much of the sign. So I click forward. This track still looked good and now maybe I make the tracking region smaller which says please Mocha just look at, it does not change the track, it just says for the next tracking straps just look at this part of the sign. I click track forwards and then I maybe want to do this again like this and now in the next frame the, uh, it is really entirely disappeared. Yeah, So I go until the point let's say here where the tr uh, sign is fully visible again I set the tracking region uh, again to the entire sign and now I first track backwards a few frames. Yeah, I click here to track the previous frame and you can see while I'm doing this, this mask is getting smaller and this is because it is slowly trying to go back to this shape that we had, had here. Yeah, But it doesn't ma matter, it's really just the shape that changes and not uh, the, the, the actual track. So the track is still looking good. Maybe here I had too much of the car itself, so let me just undo this. Maybe we should really start now making this tracking region here smaller. We can actually go here to this frame and also keyframe the mask even before we track this region. So this mask really just tells Mocha which region we look at for tracking. Yeah? And having such a small piece of texture is definitely enough to get a good track. So we track this forwards until this point where it disappears. And you can see here it already gets m moves in the wrong direction. Yeah, so it's not accurate. This edge is not following the edge of the sign anymore. So the in this frame the track's already bad. So we better undo the track at this frame. So. Now we've got tracked until here. By the way, you can see the region that is tracked by these colors. So this blue color indicates that this region is tracked. So from here on, we now track until the end. And now what we essentially have is in this region, we have a good track. 
and in this region we have a good track yeah and we can verify this by setting the surface rectangle this is if we click this button here this is a region where we can later insert our corner pin and you will see a problem in a minute that I want to show you. So I set the surface to this region and to see even better what we are doing, we can add an insert clip here. Say I want to have here some 8x8 grid texture that just visualizes our track. We can see it is nicely following here during this entire region. It nicely follows our, our track, except for maybe this very last uh, frame here. But here it's almost not visible anymore, so, so we don't care. And now the problem is here, it still follows our track, but the surface rectangle is not sitting accurately again. And this is the main pro problem that I want to show you how to deal with it here. Yeah. So it's like if we have the surface rectangle set correctly here, then it's looking wrong here. You can see the corner here, for example, should actually be here. And this corner should be here. And this could be here. And this must be here. But if we fix it in this part, then it's moving correctly in this region. But here it's offset. Yeah? And there are different ways to solve this. You can try what is called manual tracking in the options. You can try the adjust module. But I want to show you a third really quick and convenient way. And this is to say we don't care about the surface rectangle here at all. So, Or let's say we set it as we want it to be in the first part. Now it's looking correct in the first part and it's not looking correct in the second part but we don't care because we are going to fix this in After Effects. So we export our tracking data, choose the format, the corner pin format that is compatible with Mocha import because this is what we're going to use and copy it to the clipboard. Then we go to After Effects. In After Effects we can delete our mask because we just needed this mask for tracking and now we want to import the image that we want to insert uh, on top of this car wash image here. Yeah? I bring it inside of my composition and I go to Mocha Import Plus again and I load the tracking data from the clipboard that we've just exported from Mocha. When I do this, Mocha Import Plus asks me which clip did you track and so I click tracked this car wash sign, so this clip here, and this is necessary for Mocha Input Plus to know where exactly the tracking data needs to be placed in the composition. So we just choose a, your appropriate layer and click OK. And now I choose what I want to do. I want to do a corner pin. Yeah, you, Mocha Input Plus can do various things, but what we want to do is a corner pin. I select this layer that I want to corner pin and I click Apply. Now I can choose the corner pin function that I want to use. And since the edges of my uh, plate or um, of, of the uh, sign that I want to replace are slightly curved, I choose the Bezier Warp effect because this one allows me to also slightly curve the in insert. So, and I also make sure that we use live ins expressions instead of keyframes. This is a crucial feature necessary here to make work what we want to do. We click on OK. You can see that now our insert is here and in the first part it also uh, looks good but here in the second part it is not looking good as we expected. Yeah? If we click U to reveal all properties with keyframes you can see that at the point where we inserted our corner pin, yeah, at, at the first frame in this case, we have keyframes for those four corners and we can actually adjust those. So if you say, well, this corner here is not 100% accurate, we can just drag it over and now it will still move according here with the track, yeah, but it's now exactly where we want it to be. This is pretty nice. You can adjust your corner pin so that your surface rectangle later here in After Effects. And this is just because it's live expressions instead of keyframes feature. Yeah? So we can fine tune it if we want. And we can also start, you can see this here with these busier handles since, we, since we've chosen the busier corner pin. We can add some subtle distortion to it to, to fit the slight curves of, of the original. Okay, and now we just modified this very first keyframe of the four corners. And the great thing is that we can even add more more keyframes. Yeah, because we can say until this point here, until this point here, the first 
this keyframe position, like uh, where the uh, corner should be located, is perfectly fine in this entire first uh, area until the car here arrives. So here we add another keyframe by selecting the four corners and clicking this keyframe symbol. Now we've got another keyframe here, which means here until here we've got the same keyframe, yeah, the position that we want to have here. So in this region it will stay like this. And now here the car leaves. And now let's say at, at, at this frame we want to correct it. Yeah, we want to add another keyframe. So what we could do, let me just do this for now. We click here on set keyframe and now adjust these four corners to where they should be, like this. And now as a result, in this entire region, the corners also look good. The only pr subtle problem that we have, and it's not really obvious here, but it is that in this region from here to here, so this means in the region where the car is going in front, but also in these few frames before our keyframe, yeah, we will have a slow transition from the position we keyframed here to the position we keyframed here. And technically we don't really want to do this. We want to say that until this point where the sign becomes visible again, we want to only use these the keyframe values, values we had here. Yeah, it's like the position from here is uh, what should be used for, for this entire region. Now um, we cannot just move those keyframes over because if we do this you can see it changes because these keyframes include the, the tracking data yeah it's not we don't want to really have the same position here as here but the same position except for the tracked movement that happens in between so what do we do instead this is a little bit tricky uh, let me just undo here until the point where we have no keyframes here yeah so we are back to the point where we've just got these keyframes for the first part and now i said we actually don't want to insert a keyframe here where we can see all the four corners yeah but we want to add the keyframe already here at this point where it's not yet visible where ev everything is not yet visible as yeah, a point is just that here we don't see anything we don't know where exactly to place those so what we want to do is we set here our keyframe because from this point on we want to have this new value and now we will adjust this keyframe while we are actually previewing this frame where we can see the four corners how do we modify these keyframes while seeing this frame here for this we use another extension i developed which is called key tweak and it's available at a name your own price basis at a script so you can even check it out for free if you just decide to set the price to zero dollar uh, and it works as follows it moves all keyframes in the work area and we sh if we set this to work area constant it moves all keyframes in the f work area by the same amount so we set the work area to include only this keyframe yeah so now it will move these keyframes and it will move them although we are at another frame at the moment yeah so we can just select here the top left vertex for example say move left move five pixels to the left and uh, now you can see it is moving and it's modifying this keyframe but we are seeing this frame which is pretty convenient yeah so you can either use this wheel to move by five pixels or this wheel to move by one if you want to move by other values like tw 10 pixels you can just enter it here but i like to work with these numbers so yeah use this wheel for fine tuning like this this corner is looking good and I keep the spacebar pressed and pen here to see this corner. So I go here to the top right vertex and again move it where it should be. Click here, pen around to get to the bottom vertex. Bottom right vertex and move it around where it should be. So like this is really accurate. And now I go to this corner and also modify it with the help of key tweak to place it exactly where it should be so and now this means from this point on it uses this new location okay so let's see the final result of this first part of our quick tip series so what you've learned is how you can 
adjusts the tracking region over time, which is really useful when your tracking object disappeared, such that in the first part and in the second part, the location of this insert is not uh, exactly the same and you want to adjust it. You can really just, just do this by adding a few, few keyframes to the corners of your corner pen and it works because of the magic of Mocha Import Plus that has this live expressions instead of keyframes feature which allows you to add keyframes on top of the tracking data. So only possible with the help of Mocha Import Plus. And again, if you want to set a tracking data like you, or you usually want to set a keyframe at the point where your insert becomes visible again and since at this point you cannot yet see all four corners usually you just go to a later frame and modify this earlier keyframe with the help of the name your own price tool key tweak okay that's it for the first part in the second part we are going to uh, see how we can put this car back in front of our insert and in particular how we deal with the heavy motion blur that the truck here has so once again, thank you to Artbeats and Artbeats Express for providing uh, the footage I used in this tutorial. Check out their website, they really have uh, some great uh, stock footage over there. Again, my name is Matthias and I'm looking forward to see you in the next part of this tutorial series.